Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Time for music and entertainment news. And we got to start with pouring one out for a legend, a Chicago legend, if you will. Oh, this one hits. Had a great long run, 91 years old, uh, overnight. Quincy Jones died. The incredible producer, arranger, songwriter, worked with Michael Jackson on Thriller, worked with Frank Sinatra, and among others, a whole bunch of rock artists as well. He did We Are the World, if you remember that from back in the day on MTV. Of course. There's a great... Uh well, docuseries on that on Netflix. It's incredible uh, about you, the making of it in one night. It's yeah. incredible. You mentioned that a while ago. I didn't see it yet. Yeah, it's really good. No, Strocker, I know you usually take, pick up my my recommendations for TV and movies, but it, it actually is very good. It's on my list. Mm -hmm. 28 Grammys, 70 year career from the south side of Chicago. Quincy Jones has passed away. And, you know, again, you can't argue too much with 91 years old, but. It still hurts and all the stuff he touched and all the people he helped, by the way, with all things like We Are the World, all that is, mm -hmm. is incredible. Um, so Quincy Jones has passed away. Now, uh, other things going on in music entertainment news. Also sad is James Vanderbeek, who was from Dawson's Creek, but I, of course, cherish in my heart and now Case has now seen Varsity Blues. James Vanderbeek was Mox in Varsity Blues, but he shared that he's diagnosed with colorectal cancer. Um, despite the diagnosis, he's got a lot of reason for optimism. He said he's feeling good. I hope they caught it early. It's one of the more curable ones if you catch it early. That's why you got to get out there and get your colonoscopies out there, especially if you have a family history. Uh, do it early. They're actually saying if you have a history of it, you know, do it even in your 20s or 30s. Uh, to get it taken care of, because if it's caught early, it's uh, definitely very diagnosable. But mm -hmm. Varsity Blues, one of the greatest movie lines of all time when he's arguing with his dad and about playing football, Wes Canaan. Attitude's wrong. Your tone of voice is wrong. This is your opportunity For here. you. Playing football at Wes Canaan may have been the opportunity of your lifetime, but I don't want your life. Woof. Saying that to your dad? I don't want your life. That's a risky one. <laughs> he could have been knocked in the next week in the blink of an eye. Well, in the words of the coach, your dad was a no talent P word. <laughs> but at That's least he doesn't want his life. Uh, but at least he listened. Oh, John Voigt, man. Like, I don't the, want to be that at all. Football coach. Do you uh, think that's the movie you know best? I feel like you could recite the script without looking at it. Greatest sports movie of all time, Varsity Blues. No without, argument for me. Without question. Uh, finally, thinking about the most evil, worst movie character of all time. Well, a movie coming out with Robin Wright and Tom Hanks as they reunite um, from back in the day, the old Forrest Gump movie. That movie, remember that movie? Their new movie's called Here. Um, but she talked about in there, at least everybody, it's kind of become an online thing. Because when this movie came out, no one said that Jenny was an evil person. Even for years after that, no one said, boy, she's evil. They just talked about how good Forrest Gump was when the movie right, came right, out. Right, 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 right. And then over the years, it's become an online thing to call her the worst person in movie history. Because she kind of screwed over Forrest. He, all, all he did was want to be with her his whole, her whole, his whole life. And she went out, partied, did cocaine, had random sex with people, you know. And she kept saying, oh, Forrest, you're cute. You know, it's, it's, you don't want me, Forrest. You don't want me. You know what? You know what really bothered me? It wasn't even all of that. It was the, oh, yeah, you're a kid. I just decided to let you miss the first several years of the child's life because I felt like it. Yeah, it's rough. It's like, it's a bad look. Hey, like, it wasn't like you were scared of him. Why, why wouldn't you have told him? Like, ah, you know what? You just miss out on all that. Yeah. And I'm going to surprise you like it's good news you missed out on all that. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, that, that one was not great. And also surprise you when all of a sudden you have a tragic thing in your life where you're, where you're dying of AIDS, and now I want you to take your son and, yeah. and raise him the rest Otherwise, of the way. Otherwise, wouldn't have let you meet him. Like, what? What? <laughs> You know, because he had all that Bubba Gump shrimp money. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. and, and Apple stock. And Apple stock, which people forget about. Got that, we got some later for some fruit company. <laughs> <laughs> and, and said, I don't got to work no more. That's a good gump. I've never heard your gump before. <laughs> Way to gump it up. <laughs> I, I hear you do his teacher all the time, but never gump himself. Mm. Don't like, you dare. I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I can't give out everything in one show. We'll okay. save that for tomorrow. <laughs> but I like how he just kind of goes, so I don't got to work anymore. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for that to happen to me. One morning I want to wake up and say that. I want Kenzie to come in and say one day, 
got a letter from some fruit company. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, I don't got to work no more. Oh, that's nice. One less thing, right? Yeah. No, I would be really excited. <laughs> I but, feel like I'd say it different, but yeah. Mm. No, I feel like you say it just like that. <laughs> but that's the thing. This has become an online thing over the last, I guess, the movie's been out for 30 years. I guess it's come out maybe in the last 10 that Jenny's an evil person. And she uh, refuted that. Because some people even say she's kind of an anti-feminist role. And Very she goes, much so. You think so? Oh, my God, yes. She, no, she set women back. Why? She did what, what she I wanted. I don't remember what was anti-feminist about her. What was anti-feminist? Well, she sucked. Well, wait, no, that, that's well, we not, know that. We saw her okay. do a lot of that. You've got to narrow that down when you say anti-feminist. Because... She kind of did what she wanted to. That's what I mean. If anything, she was very, Feminist. very free. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't all the best choices, but she had a rough childhood, obviously. A very, very rough childhood. In the movie, that is. Not in real life. Robin Wright, uh, adorable. So, um, Can some, someone just asked for her to be on Piece of Garbage Madness. Jenny? Jenny from Forrest Gump. It's a little late, but... No, we're her on. <laughs> She's I in. she has to be on. Oh, no. She's in. <laughs> Wait, and oh. I still want the grandpa to be from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory because he sucks. That's the most evil person of all time for you in, in movies? How dare he do that to his family? They could barely afford to eat. They're having, remember they're having cabbage soup every day? And he's just <laughs> laying there rotting away. And then he starts standing up and clicking his heels. Mm. He was a faker. And then he takes the one good thing that's happened to the family. Maybe, maybe the mom and dad who are literally working their fingers with the boat would have enjoyed a day off. But no, you go ahead. You know what's funny, though? I would, I would think he's a hero to you. I hate him. Because he got one over on everybody. You should have beat him with a frying pan. He's <laughs> awful. Like, for example, people that are the worst people in movie history. No one talks about the mayor in Jaws. That's my pick. Is that yours? Oh, my God. Because, I, you know, I watched Jaws for the first time this year. Yeah. And it's, it's a great movie. One of my favorites that I've watched. The entire movie, I'm just aghast by every scene that the mayor is in and every decision that he makes and the fact that he is determined to have those beaches open by the 4th of July. Oh, that's a good impersonation. I, it's the one I can do. That's pretty good. So He's just trying to bring a beach to the people. That's what the big deal is. <laughs> Everybody wanted to go to the beach. Well, people are getting eaten there. You well, know. What is he supposed to do? Everyone wants to be at the beach? Try to over the beach. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Sir, go. You want to go? You go. It's up to you. Seeing how it's election season, I saw a tweet from someone and said, just remember, get out and vote, because the mayor of Jaws got elected again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so accurate, uh, because he got he got re-elected yeah. after people got eaten by sharks, and he said, go to the beach and swim. And back in my day, a shark attack used to tank your political career. <laughs> I guess things are a little bit different now. Well, hey, what are you supposed to do? Control sharks? Well, he, he could have at least stopped people from getting uh, becoming hors d'oeuvres or oatmeal raisin cookies in the water to oh, these then sharks. Then they wouldn't have been eaten if it is like oatmeal raisin cookies. Mm. Everyone would have lived. Here, just here's a piece from Jaws, the original, where Richard Dreyfuss is arguing with him, saying, like, you got to close the beaches, and here's the mayor's response. It's really a miracle of evolution. All this machine does is swim and eat and make little sharks, and that's all. Now, why don't you take a long, close look at this sign? Those proportions are correct. Love to prove that, wouldn't you? Get your name into the National Geographic. <laughs> uh, if we make an effort today, we might be able to save August. August? For Christ's sake, tomorrow's the 4th of July, and we will be open for business. It's going to be one of the best summers we've ever had. Now, if you fellas are concerned about the beaches, you do whatever you have to to make them safe. But those beaches will be open for this weekend. <laughs> This guy knows that there's a shark out there eating people. Hey, he said they could keep working. He's like, you work at it, and yeah. then they're going to enjoy their time while you're working at it. How do it. you stop a shark in the water? That he That's why he hired the experts. <laughs> he doesn't know. Evil. I don't know who you think the most evil person in movie history is, but right now we got Jenny and the mayor in Jaws. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101 and the grandfather in Charlie the Chocolate Factory. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. We're just talking about the most evil person in movie history because uh, Robin Wright came out, a movie with called Here with her old friend Tom Hanks from Forrest Gump, and that whole conversation came up as Jenny, the worst person in the world, and not you know, a lovable character, which she was and when the movie came out. It's turned over time. Uh, a lot of text coming in, 708. Uh, Anakin slash Darth Vader killed a whole classroom of kids in episode three. He did do that. That I mean, is true. But that's when he turned evil. And it was pretty evil. It was. What, is he Darth Vader or something? Oh. Anakin, Anakin Skywalker is Darth Vader. He is Darth Vader? Yeah. Okay. So he becomes Darth Vader. He is Luke's father. 
Oh, crap, a spoiler alert. My bad. <laughs> okay, so Anakin... An- so everyone knew what he looked like. Why do you wear the mask? Well, be- <sighs> Everyone knew him. Okay, should I go explain all that? You can't just come out wearing a mask and go, Darth Vader. everyone knows you're Anakin. No, no he was- needed to wear a mask. There was, what happened there was this planet called Mustafar, right? Oh, don't go back there. There was this giant lightsaber battle with Obi-Wan and Anakin. <laughs> And Obi-Wan had the high ground, you see. It was over. Obi-Wan had the high ground. Okay. And Anakin fell in this lava because it was a planet made of lava. It was a volcanic planet. What a planet. stupid place to fight. You know, honestly, she's right. Why would you want to fight there? <laughs> it was a really <laughs> dumb place. To... If they didn't fight there, we wouldn't have had Darth Vader. Okay, so... You know, you know how many millions of people died because of Darth Vader? This is true. I think as a society, we really softened the evils of Darth Vader. So, but if it was before Darth Vader was evil, why has Obi started a whole fight with him? Why is Obi Wan sort of fight yeah, with him? Yeah, why were they fighting? Was he was killing he's... younglings. He turned evil. That's why Obi Wan had to fight him. So what? He fell in some lava, and his face got all weird. Yes, literally. That's what. That's episode three. Have <laughs> you seen some of the faces in Star Wars? I don't think he needed to cover his up. Mm-mm. You like... know what? This is an amazing analysis of the movie from Kenzie, who's never seen a Star Wars movie. She's actually nailing it. They shouldn't have fought on a lava planet. That's yeah. for sure. Hello. <laughs> And, uh, Rule number one in Star Wars, but don't that, fight on the lava planet. That's where the Sith Lords, that's where their base was. They chose a planet with lava on that's it. That's a bad choice. But it's but an evil guys, planet. Huh? It makes sense for bad guys to be there. They don't want good people to come there, so they it's kind of like living in a bad neighborhood. I mean, <laughs> location, location, location. Bad idea. Look at your face. Yeah. Well, it worked out for him eventually. For a long time, he had a, a rule with a mask on. Okay. So, <laughs> we're talking about the most evil characters in movie history. Um, oh, someone brought up Burke from Aliens, which Case hasn't seen yet, which is Paul Reiser, the comedian. Boy, is he evil. He, I, I'm not going to give a spoiler because Case may watch Aliens someday. I'd like to. I've never seen it. It's a great movie, but also it ties in to uh, what Allison said in Waukegan, uh, evil person. And she just says, going back to Jaws, the mayor was in it for the... Money, not the safety. <laughs> Jonas, son of a bitch. Who is that, honey? Jonas Miller, he's a night crawler. We all start out in the same lab that Jonas went out and got himself some corporate sponsors. He's in it for the money, not the science. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show on Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Time for some local stories. And yeah, we got to pour one out, which is very disappointing and upsetting to me on this one. Okay. Saw this everywhere over the weekend, and I had to kind of verify is it true? So, Revolution Brewing. Announced Saturday it will be closing its Logan Square Brew Pub on December 14th. Now, this brewery opened in, on Milwaukee Avenue about 15 years ago. And Anti Hero, the IPA, has become one of the best IPAs, not only just here, but in the country. Um, certainly an awesome. I believe they're the biggest independent brewing of beer in Chicagoland. Uh, so they're not going away Revolution Brewing themselves, but this brew pub on uh, Milwaukee's closing. It's really sad because it's a beautiful building. People have weddings there. In fact, there was a whole bunch of weddings already booked through 2025. And here's the thing, they're closing this. And unlike what we've talked about, a lot of local things lately that have had to close, they're not doing it, quote, suddenly. They're doing it December 14th and they're working with all the employees that will be laid off, unfortunately, but they're helping them out. And that's good. That's important. You know, full disclosure, and they're they're really being transparent, and trying to help everybody and what they can do with them, and help them find a new job possibly. But, but that brew pub is amazing, and their beer, uh-huh. their beer is incredible. So you can go there until December fourteenth. You want to help out, but um, like their hazy pitch pale ale for me than the city series. That's that's the beer for that's me. That's the for one, me. baby. Yep. Revolution Brewing. So again, they're not going away, but that brewery closing is is really sad. They never recovered fully uh-huh. from the pandemic and. Uh, just a lot of people. It's a special place, unlike just a, just a beer. You know what I mean? Right. So, there you go. Uh, more local news going on. This is actually, I guess, opposite of that. Google is opening its first brick and mortar store in the Midwest at Oak Brook Center Mall. So, kind of weird to have a Google store, um, but uh, just like Apple stores all over the place, and you know, the products and using their experiences mm-hmm. and trying to help you understand Google better. I don't know. I put stuff in there and it finds everything for me. 
I don't know if I need the Google store, but maybe it's a good thing. Maybe something really cool in there. I, I don't know. I don't know what's there. Is it like Google merch? Or is it like, I'm, what, what can you get at a Google store? So they do sell, obviously, phones. So just like an Apple store. Oh, that's right. I did forget that. Yeah, Apple. Google has their own phone. Well, you know, it, it's easy to forget in a way. My brother had a Google phone and loved it. Yeah. It does a bunch of tricks. It's cool. It did tricks? Yeah, it does hmm. stuff. What kind of tricks? I honestly don't remember now, but I would be like, well, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's the center for Chicago. Obviously, it's a multi-million dollar design of the iconic Thompson Center's underway from Google. Mm-hmm. So opening that store out in Oak Brook, uh, you know, pretty cool thing. I, I, I go check it out, see what's going on in there. And uh, finally, with all of this rain coming in uh, last night and throughout the next couple of days, Chicago area residents are asked to delay showers and use less water ahead of this rain. Like wedding showers and baby showers? Nope. Oh, what kind of, what do you mean? You getting wet. You cleaning yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, stop showering. Yes, sir. Don't have to ask me twice. You don't have to worry about him showering too much. Um, why? Why can't we? Sh- there's a lot of water. That was like the time. You'd think with all that rain, there's more water, right? Yeah, there's too much water. Please have a shower. Well, we're expecting one to three inches of rain in a lot of parts uh, into Tuesday, and because of overflow action, alerts happen. So I guess when you're using water, flushing toilets, it enters a sewer system, and then there's too much water in those systems when there's that much rain added into it, and it causes basements to flood and businesses to flood or, or worse, streets to flood. So, Can I ask something that may be stupid? I don't know everything about this, but go ahead. What the hell does that have to do with, like, my, my big water heater? Like, what does that have to do with it? That's, like, its own thing. So even though, like, the street has a bunch of water, what does that have to do with going on inside? <laughs> Why, like, it just doesn't seem like my business. It doesn't relate to your water heater. Uh, but, but that's wa- where all the, isn't that where the water's coming out of? That's yes. where the big tank is. Right, but water has to leave your house. Yeah. When you flush it or shower. Oh, I, they're more worried about more water going outside. Yes. Okay. It's not about your house. Where does it go? At the sewer system. Okay, I don't know. This is a big conversation. It's just even above my head. I can't explain it perfectly, but either I see. way. Too much water on the ground. Don't add water to the ground. Correct. I see. Water doesn't stay in your house. I see. <laughs> Case, how do you feel about this? I'm not showering for the rest of the week. I'll be doing my part. That sounds like uh, the Rose, right move. Can't wait for a potluck with your dirty hands making the food. <laughs> Will you wash your hands? No, that's water. That's water oh, going God. out. Oh, I no. can't have that. The Brian and Kenzie Show on Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Lauren coming in. It's going to rain from now until pretty much Wednesday. So remember. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, Thank you, Brian. We are kind of in a drought situation here in Illinois, so uh, the rain is needed. Let me just say that. Try to be a bring a bright side. After the Bears game, I've yelled so much my voice is cracking all morning mm-hmm. long. I know. I just want something positive that the rain is actually going to be something positive. Are we in a drought? We're in a drought. Oh. Yeah. I missed that memo. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think it's on your radar. Uh, uh, radar? Pun? Weather? Rain? <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> 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 All right, kids, what do you got for takeaways? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Abby and Elgin checked in. Hot dogs are basically eclairs. Damn right. Well According said. to some grocery stores. <laughs> right. Eat them and don't question it. Uh, Kenzie, what do you got? 708 texted in. Takeaway, water doesn't stay in your house after you use it. <laughs> Jerk. Hey, gotta, gotta learn. It's a very educational show. We're like, we're like uh, public radio. We're like the BBC, if you we're, will. Well, we're talking about what needs to be talked <laughs> about. Uh, finally, Christine checked at 815. Kenzie would rather bathe in oatmeal cookies than deal with the grandpa from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> evil, evil man. Uh, Case, what's on the podcast? Well, we did have an argument about oatmeal raisin cookies that nearly tore this show apart. If you missed us at 8 a.m., one, be thankful that we're here. Two, go back to the podcast and listen to that conversation. Brian did not listen to his therapist's advice last week. He paid the price for it yesterday with the Bears game. Oh. And sadly, I will not tell you what the 2024 word of the year is, but we learned that it was not Cybertruck, and that is a real bummer. (laughs) Miss a moment, miss a lot. Go to the podcast, Q101.com, anywhere you get your podcasts like Spotify or Apple. Or how about the Q101 app? It's free. It's newly redesigned, and it's awesome. Uh, Very slick. You should download it. Brian and Kenzie in the morning, and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101.